Thank you, thank you. How's everybody doing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Let me hear you. We're going to go back and do that first song and make you do the hand motions. Oh, happy day. We're going to start doing the hand motions. We've got to get some life. I've got to have some life tonight, okay? Yeah. Got to help me, all right? Michelle and I were blessed. We went and spoke at Word Power Church Sunday morning out in League City. And uh, we had a great time. First, let's welcome our online guests, our visitors. Hey, welcome, everybody. Give them a big hand, those that are watching us online. God bless you. We're glad that you're here in Houston, Texas tonight. And uh, we're just blessed that you're here. Get your Bible, get your notebook. We're going to go to faith school tonight. There'll be some links and some notes and some things you can copy and look at and give you more information about the church. But we're excited that you're here. You make yourself at home. Amen. So we're going to talk about faith, but we had a great opportunity to go preach out in League City for the Youngs. And it so reminded me of when this church, before this church was built, you know, it started in my parents' house 30 years ago. And, uh, and then they moved into the YMCA. And the YMCA, how many ever went to church at the YMCA? It was, it was uh, um, you, everybody... Um, you, put that, you set the chairs, and you put the sound system in, and at the end of every service, what'd you do? You picked up your chair, and, and so we were yesterday, I mean Sunday, we were out at that church, and they meet in a school, and as soon as I was done, everybody just turned around and picked up their chair and put it, uh, started stacking them or whatever, so it brought back some good, good, good memories. Some good, good, good memories. So a couple of different directions tonight. As I was praying early this morning, uh, the Lord immediately took me to Psalms 1. And uh, a very popular, very famous passage of Scripture about blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of the sinner, who does not sit in the seat of the scoffer, who does not, I'm sorry, who does not stand in the way of the scoffer, who does not sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate both day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf shall never fade. And I was like, Lord, what does that have to do with anything that I want to talk about tonight? And so I came to the office, and as usually on Tuesdays I shut my door about 10 o'clock, and I spend the rest of the afternoon praying and studying and getting ready. And I even told my dad at one point, I said, I'm just having a hard time today of what I'm supposed to do tonight. And so I, you know did some notes and studied and prayed and felt like I had something. It wasn't my favorite. And then when I was back there praying, all of a sudden it, it hit me of what I was supposed to do. So we're going to go in a little bit of a different direction, and then we're going to come back to this. But this is just something about faith. Amen? We're talking about faith. Amen? How many of us have a faith project? How many of us are believing God for something right now? Amen. Everybody in this room, we need a faith project. Every single one of us needs to be using our faith on something, or more importantly, someone. Amen. We're all believing God for increase. We're believing God for things, and that's wonderful, and that's one of the reasons why He gave us faith. But the most valuable thing that you can use your faith on is to believe God for souls, because that's the most precious thing to the Lord. Amen. So maybe, Lord, I don't, I don't need a car, I don't need a house, I'm happy, I'm content, great, no problem. Every single one of us has somebody in our life that needs Jesus. Amen. Amen? And so there's your faith project right there. Write that person's name down. Get some scriptures. Is it God's will for all men to be saved? Yes. yes. So you're already in the middle of His will. So how can He not give you something that's already in the middle of His will? Amen? So I'm going to believe God for souls. I have a list of people that I pray for, and the list changes, and uh, it modifies, and some people come and some people go, and, uh, but I want to be using my faith on something more than just material things. Those are, those are beggarly things. Amen? Amen? That new car you're believing God for is not going to last forever. Amen. Right? It's going to go the way of the grave one day. That new house, amen, after 20, you see what I'm saying? Those things that we're believing for, they have a shelf life, but souls are eternal. So we always want to be using our, our faith for souls. But this is what the Lord, this is why the Lord gave me Psalms 1. Faith is progressive. Amen? Faith is progressive. Let me show you in the book of Mark. In 
and it says in um, Mark chapter 4, verse 28, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Faith is progressive. Amen? We believe God, we sow our seed. Does anybody ever see the seed after you've planted it? No, all you're looking is the ground. That seed is underneath. Now, your faith is believing that even though you cannot see that seed, because it's been watered and it's in good soil, it's now beginning to produce a root system. Can you see the roots? Still can't see the roots. You really don't have any idea that anything's going on, but the seed is progressing. It is moving, right? It is moving, it is growing, and there's more going on underneath the ground than there is on top of ground. But then that day, and the little stalk comes out of the ground. Praise God. I've been standing, I'm believing there's a progression of what's happened from the seed to now to the stalk. Well, then it grows into a tree, and then it begins to produce leaves, and then it begins to produce fruit. Amen? There's a progression to faith. Faith is always moving forward. And let me tell you now why it's so important for us to walk and to have a faith project. Because if we are not walking forward, we're not walking with God. If we're not believing God for something, then we're not moving forward. That's what keeps us from that evil word that they used to throw around many years ago, backslider. What's a backslider? Remember everybody backslid on Saturday nights? Okay, maybe you didn't, but backsliding. There are some denominations that you had to get saved every Sunday because at some point during the week you were a backslider, right? That means you slid back from what you believe. What prevents us from being a backslider? I am always moving forward. If I'm in faith or if I'm using my faith, then I'm always moving forward. I'm always walk. I have to walk with God in order for my faith project to come to about. If I'm not have a faith project, then I'm standing still. So let me show you how Psalm 1 climbed, uh, jumps into that. There's an opposite work that takes place when I don't have a faith project. All of a sudden, it begins to work in reverse. Back to Psalms 1, 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the, uncounts, in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Do you see how that too is also progressive, but in a negative sense? First I'm walking with sinner, then I'm standing, and then I'm sitting. There's a progression. When I'm not walking with God then I'm doing Psalm 1. If I don't, I cannot walk, I cannot have a faith project and walk away from God at the same time. I can't be in faith and a backslider at the same time. I can't do both. Because with faith, I'm always walking forward. Remember the steps of faith. The steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord and He delights in His way. It's all about the steps. Faith always keeps us moving forward. It always keeps us connected to God. Because God is faith. Amen? He's the the originator of our faith. So that's why it's so important for each and every one of us to have a faith project. It keeps us always moving forward with God. Amen? Amen? When I stop, when I'm not using my faith, what other, what other spiritual exercise is there that keeps me from falling back from the things of God? Because what happens is a lot of times people will come, they'll come to our church, they'll hear the faith message, we get excited about it, we find out it's God's will for us to prosper, we find out it's God's will for us to be healed, we find out it's, it's God's will for me to be delivered, it's, it's all God's will and we get excited about faith, But then when we start walking out the steps of faith and that there is something that I'm responsible for, not as excited as I was about the message. I got to sow. 
I got to forgive? I mean, I have to live a lifestyle that's equal to the calling? You see what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, people quit believing, and they start moving a little bit farther back in the congregation, and a little bit farther back in the congregation, and then the next thing you know, they've gone out the door. Why is that? Because they let go of their faith, and they started walking with the ungodly, standing, and then sitting back into their old lifestyle. Amen? So that's why your faith, your faith is doing more than you could ever know. Your faith project, it's not just a matter of what you're believing for. It affects everybody else in the room. Anybody? Okay, how about this? Has anybody ever prayed? No one's ever prayed. Anybody ever prayed? Should have 100% participation. Has anybody ever prayed? You're praying right now. Oh, God, please let him stop. Lord, no. Anybody ever prayed? Anybody ever had an answer to prayer? So you prayed, and you got an answer to what you prayed for, right? That's faith. That's it. There's nothing super spiritual. There's nothing theoretical about it. It has nothing to do. It's you simply went to God, you prayed, you asked, you believed that you received, and you had. That's faith. It's so simple. It's just a matter of asking God. Now, there are a few things that we do in the middle of it. Amen. I want to find out what his will is concerning what I'm asking for. Amen. I want to walk out the steps of faith. Everybody has different steps of faith for what you're believing for. Amen. I'm not letting time dictate, time or money dictate what I'm going to do. Amen. I mean, if I'm believing God to get married because I have a biological clock, well, a biological clock's not faith. That's a biological clock. Ask Sarah. She was 100 years old and had a baby. There was no biological clock. Amen? Time and money have nothing to do with it. Nothing. God supersedes time all the time. Amen? Turn water into wine, just like that. Super, I mean, just boom. Took time out of the scenario. So, faith, this is why faith is so important for us as a believer, because it is what connects us to God. It's what connects us to this Christian life that we're walking out. Amen? Everybody got saved, right? Amen. Remember that day when you got born again? You had saving faith that day? Someone preached the gospel to you? You heard the gospel? You received it into your heart? You repeated a prayer? And you got wonderfully and beautifully born again? But that was not the end of the process. It was only the beginning. Now we learn to walk and live by faith. Amen? so that I can have and do and be everything that God has called me to be in this earth today. Everything that God wants you to become, you're not going to do it in your own strength or by your own works. You're going to do it by faith. Amen? Hebrews chapter 11 is not a, a bunch of group of people that just worked a lot harder than everybody else. Hebrews chapter 11, the, the heroes of faith, why are they heroes of faith? They're not heroes of work. They're not heroes of luck. They're not heroes of privilege. They're heroes of faith. Why are they in the Bible as heroes of faith? Because everything that they did was done by faith. Faith and trust in God. Amen? So everything that we do, see, we need to be saturated with the Word of God. When you get to the point of saturation, things will begin to change in your life. We have to get saturated. Faith comes out of the overflow. Yes. Amen? Faith should come out of the overflow. When uh, we were sharing at the church on Sunday, I was sharing that, you know, I'd done a powerlifting competition a few years back in October. And I uh, had trained for the meet and worked really, really hard and every day worked and had a plan and lifted for it, trained for it, sacrificed for it, went to the meet that day and lifted more than I'd ever lifted before. Amen? More than I'd ever lifted before. But a lot of times people think, well, you did all your growth at the meet. No, no, no. It was all the every day, the line by line, the training that I did every day. Some days it felt like I took a step forward. Other days I took a step back. There were days before the meet that I thought, why am I even doing this? 
I feel, I don't look good. I don't feel good. This is terrible. I'm going to embarrass myself. Amen. I had doubts about it, but you know what? I trusted the training and the people that were helping me do what I wanted to do. Amen. A lot of times we think if I can just get to the big meet, that's when I'm going to have the big experience and that's when I'm going to lift the most. No, no, no. When we, when we come to church, we should have a culmination. We should all be setting personal records in faith every Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning, because it's what we've done Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of our own personal time in the Word, alone with Jesus. What'd you get? What'd you get? And how many times have you read your Bible or gotten something from God, and one of them got up and preached it on that Sunday morning and said, God was, God was telling me the exact same thing. That's living out of your overflow. Amen. Each one of us need to get saturated where we begin to live our life out of the overflow. Amen. So I'm going to kind of do a little faith tune up tonight. Amen. So most important thing, you need a faith project. Okay. If you don't have one, I'll give you one. I got neighbors that need to get saved. I'll give you their names. I don't know. Every one of us needs to be believing God for someone or something. It is your normal, healthy exercise. It keeps us from being spiritual sluggards. Amen? It keeps us from being lazy. If we're not believing God for something, then we're just being lazy. If the Word doesn't work for me, it's not God's fault. It's because I'm being lazy. I'm not doing, I'm expecting results, but I'm not putting in what it takes to get the result I'm looking for. I know that's harsh sometimes to hear, but that's, it's, never, it's never a problem on God's side. Is it? Is there a power problem with God? No. So where's the problem? It's with me. Amen. And the sooner I come to the revelation of that and ask God to show me what's blocking the blessing or what's keeping me, why is it working for everybody else but it's not working for me, the word works for everybody. Amen. Amen. But if we're not putting in what it takes to get the results we're believing for, then we're just going to be really frustrated. Amen. Had I gone to my power lifting meet and only lifted maybe two or three times up to that point? Well, I tried it. I tried lifting. Then I went to the meet and everybody else lifted more than me. I, I went to that 500 pounds on the deadlift and it just wouldn't move. That's not fair. I'm frustrated. Well, yeah, I'm frustrated. Why is it? Because I was expecting a result but had not put in the work that I needed, I had an unrealistic expectation about what I was doing. Amen? The Word works for everybody. There's not one person in the world the Word won't work for. Amen? Amen. So, Hebrews chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Does everybody know that one by heart? Amen? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Out of the Passion Translation, which is really good, that verse says, Now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Isn't that good? Out of the mirror translation. Persuasion confirms confident expectation and proves the unseen world to be more real than the seen. Faith celebrates as certain what hope visualized as future. Isn't that good? Kind of like Star Trek music should be playing right there. So, faith is always now. Amen? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now. Say now. Now. Faith is always now. It is always present tense. Amen? I don't have to use my faith for anything that happened yesterday. Unless I messed up really bad and I need forgiveness or something, you know? Amen? 
But I don't need to use my faith for today to believe for something for yesterday. I need to use my faith today for what I need today and what I need to pull in for my tomorrow. So faith is always now. Amen? So when do I believe that I receive? Now. Now. So when I pray, so when you said the sinner's prayer, whoever led you through it, did they say, now be saved tomorrow or in three weeks? What did they say? When did you get saved? Now. The minute you said the prayer, irregardless of how you felt, irregardless of whether you got a tingle or anything like that at all, amen, you were wonderfully and beautifully born again. According to 2 Corinthians 5.17, you are now a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen? All things. All things become new. By faith, right then, the minute you second, there was a, 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 a complete change of your insides that took place, so much of a change that you were turned into something that had never been before. You were a one of a kind. You have been transformed. Now, did your body change? Nope. Did your thinking change? Nope. But now your spirit is alive. And it now has the ability to change those things from the inside out because now your spirit is perfect. And so when I start using my faith, then change. I saw more change in my life probably the first three years of my walk only because I was at such a deficit in so many areas of my life. I had no idea I was a disciplined person. No clue. Structure? Me? Then all of a sudden I was like, why am I on time? This is weird. Why, where did this structure and this discipline, where have you been? You know, he was in there the whole time, but once I got saved and got my right mind back, then all of a sudden I found out who I really was. Amen? You're never going to know who you are until you know Jesus. Amen? You're never going to know who you are, what's inside of you, until you know Jesus. So faith is always now. I'm not going to believe, I believe. I'm not waiting to believe, I believe. When I pray and I give the faith command, I believe now. When do I receive? Now. But where is it? It's mine. But I don't see it. Exactly. It's mine. It's coming. It's here. Amen. Your faith is what has the spiritual substance to reach into the unknown and pull out what you're believing for into the known. It's what reaches in to the unseen, pulls out what you're believing for into the seen. Amen. It doesn't work the opposite. I don't see it first, then pull it in. You're going to have it. Look, when you're believing God for something, you're going to have it here first. You're going to have a knowing. Amen? I have a knowing. I'm going to have a knowing. It's like my my parents' house. I have a knowing that their house is sold. I've had it for about three weeks now. I just know it. I just know that it's sold. Now, did I put a date on that and say it'll be sold by Wednesday at noon? They would love for me to say that, but, but I have a knowing. There's a settling because we've used our faith to believe God for it to be sold. So I have a knowing. So when was the house sold? When I believed. But there's still a for sale sign. Doesn't matter. When did the for sale sign dictate whether I receive? What does that have to do with anything? What does the for sale sign have to do with anything? What does a neighbor telling me that no house is sold on this street for two years? What does that have to do with anything? Has absolutely nothing to do with anything. I got it here first, but how do I get it here first? By meditating on his word, amen? I'm meditating, I'm meditating, I'm meditating on his word. I meditate a lot on his word, but I don't meditate enough. Be real honest with you. I meditate on the word every day. I meditate on it every day, but even the Lord is showing me. You, You think you're producing this great spiritual force, You are producing a force because you are walking in the blessing and there's protection around you and there's provision. But to get to the land of more than enough, to get out of that land of just enough. See, Israel came out of Egypt where there was not enough. Then they go into the wilderness where there was just enough to move into a promised land where there was more than enough. 
it was a lot harder for Israel to get into the land of more than enough than it was for them to get out of the land of not enough. Amen? Because now there's giants in the land. Amen? So we have to have a different, we need to be saturating ourselves with the word. Listen to the word. Listen to faith teachers. Amen? Listen to Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Savelle. Listen to all of them because they are preaching and teaching that word of faith. And that faith comes alive to you. Amen? Amen. Comes alive to you. So, your natural faith, amen, we all have natural faith, but it's governed by your five physical senses. The natural man, when he's born into this world, who's unsaved, lives totally and completely by his five physical senses. I can only go by what I see, feel, touch, hear, smell, whatever. That's my reality. Anything outside of that reality, I don't believe because I can't see it. I can't feel it. I can't touch it. When I tell somebody I'm believing God for something or someone, they ask, well, where is it? Well, it's mine. It's in here. But yeah, but where is it? It's mine. Amen. They're not going to believe. Remember Thomas? You know, Thomas happened not to be in the room the first time Jesus appeared. And so when he's back with the disciples the next time, he was like, oh, if I could just see his, I would believe if I could just touch his hands or see his face, boom, Jesus shows up. And what did Jesus say? Blessed is he who has not seen and be- but believed. Amen. Whatever you're believing for, you're going to have in here yeah. first. So that's very, very important that you are led by that inward witness first and foremost. Amen. Don't step out to do whatever it is that you think you're supposed to do unless you have a complete peace about what you're going to do. Don't don't be hasty. I told Brian and Natasha at their church when we were preaching Sunday, I said, God is going to bring you your building and it's going to be suddenly, but it's not going to be hastily. There's a big difference between a suddenly and a hastily. A suddenly is in the culmination of like everybody was gathered in the upper room. They waited and they waited, they waited, they waited. And suddenly from heaven, there was a sound. They were all in the right place at the right time of what God had called them and asked them to do. And suddenly, hastily is when I just want to get this thing done all on my own. Hastily is I need this car and I need it now. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to make a bad deal on a bad car and put myself in a bunch of bad debt with 300 easy payments because I need that car. Lord, thank you for this car. I just thank you for this car. No, no, no. That's not a suddenly. That's a hastily. And hasty decisions are expensive decisions. Whatever you get by faith cannot be taken away from you. Whatever you get by faith cannot be taken away from you. Amen? But the hasty decisions that we make that can add time to what we're, we're standing for and what we're believing for. Amen? That can add time to it. So, natural faith is based on your five physical senses, limited to what the world gives me. Bible faith is belief, trust, confidence, and faithfulness. It is unlimited. Think about that word for a minute. Unlimited. You can go anywhere and do anything in God. You can use your faith. Your faith will work in this room. It'll work in every other room in this church. It'll work down the street. It'll work at your house. It'll work at the hospital. It'll work at jail. It'll work in another country. It'll work in an airplane. It'll work in a train. It'll work under the ocean. There's no place in this world where your faith cannot work or produce for you. That's how powerful your faith is. And that's why the devil fights you on it so hard. That is, the, that is the point of his attack every single time, is to try and stop you from using your faith. Let me ask you this. Was Satan able to stop you from getting saved? Then how can he stop you from what you're believing for now? How can he ever stop you from what you're believing for now? If he, if he had the ability to stop your faith, he wouldn't let you get saved. Because it took faith to get saved. Come on. I'm setting somebody free right now. Amen? Your faith, amen, Satan cannot stop your faith. 
what he'll try and do is throw up counterfeits. He'll try and throw up um, not corresponding actions, but he'll try and, and, and give you something that doesn't correspond with what you're believing for, like it's the opposite. He'll try and give you the illusion of an opposite thing of what you're believing for. Well, I'm believing God for healing. Well, the test came back and it says I'm even worse. Well, what's a test got to do with anything of the Word of God says about your position? Amen? How many times have they looked at an x-ray one day, and you've gone back the next day, and they're like, oh, well, that was just a little smudge from my pinky. Oh, nope, not cancer. You're okay. Amen? But will we go by what the doctor says instead of going by what the Word of God says? Amen? So we're going to plant our faith on what? The Word. Amen? We're going to plant our faith in and on the Word of God. In and on the Word of God. Luke 137. Luke 137. My pretty wife, will you read it when you get it? Uh, either one. So nothing is impossible to God, okay? So take whatever it is that you're believing for and put it under the umbrella of the impossible. Amen? Amen? Whatever it is that you're believing for with God, nothing is impossible. Now, if you're willing to stand forever, it won't take that long. That's a Kenneth Hagin quote from probably the 1930s. If you are willing to stand forever for what you're believing for, then it won't take that long for you to get it. But you have to be willing to stand as long as it takes to receive it. Amen? I'm not going to let time dictate whether I keep believing it or not. That's why it's so important for us to develop a walk of faith now and to teach our children the walk of faith, especially when it comes to the area of sickness. Because if we wait too long, if I start training my kids now to walk and live by faith, when they get attacked in their bodies, they're already trained and they know what to do. Yeah. You know, I'm not waiting for, to get attacked with cancer and then I'm going to use my faith. I want to have been using my faith all the way up to that point so that I'm ready so that when I release my faith for that, I'm, all, I'm not starting at a deficit. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why it's so important for us to be building ourselves up in faith all day, every day. We need to have healing scriptures. We need to have protection scriptures. Amen. Psalm 91 should be part of our repertoire. Isaiah 53 should go without saying for each and every one of us. Prosperity scriptures, we should, they should be rolling out of us like there's nothing. We should be constantly saturating ourselves with the word and with these scriptures. Amen. We should be constantly letting faith come in our ears and out of our mouths, into our eyes and out of our mouth. Faith, faith, everything, the word of God, in and out, in and out, in and out. Amen. And you will get to that critical mass where you have so much more faith than you do doubt and unbelief. And then boom, what you're believing for, it appears. Amen. But if you're willing to stand forever, it won't take that long to get whatever it is that you're believing for. Colossians 1.4, for we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. And I love this definition out of the Amplified of what faith is. I'll start over. Colossians 1.4 out of the Amplified says, for we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, the leaning of your entire human personality on him in absolute trust and confidence in his power, his wisdom, and his goodness. That's faith. Does it say the leaning of half of your human personality? No. Faith is the leaning of your entire personality. But really, what's, what's our faith based in in God? What's the central, what's the thing that holds the whole thing together? His love. If you don't believe that God truly loves you, you're going to have a hard time ever receiving anything by faith. But when you have a revelation that God loves you, then you'll have no problems receiving from him by faith. Well, why am I going? Why when I'm asking God, I'm believing God for X, Y, and Z? Because he loves me. Yeah. 
Amen? I'm not some spoiled little child. Amen? God, I'm coming to you in the way that you asked me to, the way you created me to. I'm coming to you by faith, and I'm doing the steps of faith. And God is just like, you know what? I love you. He's like my father. I love you. I want to bless you. I want to get to you. I'm looking. If we have that kind of mindset about the father, it's so easy to receive from the father. If we don't have that mindset, if we're caught up in works and traditions and laws and all that kind of stuff, it's very hard to receive because everything is now based on your works. If I'm just good enough, God will do this for me. If I act just good enough, then I'll be able to do what God's asked me to do. If I work hard enough, if I'm humble enough, and see now all of a sudden our own self-righteousness dictates whether I receive something from God or not. I've kind of produced and created my own righteousness. I have to be righteous in my own eyes when God's the one that made me righteous. Not by anything that I did of my own. He chose to make me righteous through his son, Jesus Christ. He gave me right standing. He seated me in the heavenly places next to his son. He loves you and me as much as he loves Jesus. And that is a hard thought for people to deal with sometimes because religion would never, ever allow you to be put on the same pedestal with Jesus. But when we have a revelation that God loves me, when my children come to me and they ask me for things, they know that I love them and they know that they can come and ask of me whatever they need. Now, I'm going to have fun with them (laughs) while they do it. And I'm going to make them sweat just a little bit. I'm glad God doesn't do that like I do it. But, <laughs> but when they come to me, they come to me out of love, not out of fear. Amen? So when you have a revelation that God loves you, it's going to open up the floodgates of heaven. That word hoped, hoped, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. There is a, this is from Miss Karen de Genova. There's different types of hope. Aren't there, Karen? Yes, there are. There is an earthly hope, which is based in earthly things. So are you going to go to church tonight? I sure hope so. Do you think it's going to rain tomorrow? I sure hope not. You see that kind of hope? That kind of hope is like wishing or that type of thing. I hope so. You know, are you going to get better? Well, I sure hope so. Well, is God going to heal you today? Well, I sure hope so. See, that's not based in anything biblical. There is an earthly hope, but then there is a Bible hope. And Bible hope produces Bible things. If we do what they did in the Bible, if we do it the way they did it in the Bible, we'll have the same results that they had. Amen? So there is a earthly hope, and then there is a Bible hope or a God hope. God hope works everywhere and it goes well beyond the natural realm. God hope is full expectation and total expectancy. That's Bible hope. Amen? Total expectancy. Anybody remember Tim Story? Does that name sound familiar? Tim Story was an evangelist. I think he's still around, but I heard him once and he made this. There's another example of of Bible hope and it's it's called outstretched neck. You're expecting. (coughs) And he said, excuse me, when he was in Los Angeles, (coughs) excuse me, that um, that I guess there's some areas in Los Angeles that are rougher than others. And he said, you know, it was okay to be in these areas of Los Angeles during the day, but you did not want to be there at night because it was very, very dangerous. So he said he would observe these guys at the bus stop waiting for the last bus to get out of that part of town. And they were all (laughs) outstretched neck, fully expecting, looking for that bus because they knew they had to get out of this part of town pretty quick before it came down. They were expectant. They were looking. Faith or the hope involved in faith is always expecting and always looking to what it's believing for. It's living in a, in a place of expectancy that God has already done what he said that he was going to do. Yes. I'm not waiting for God to do it. He's already done it. Yes. I'm not waiting for God to heal me. He's already healed me. Yes. 
I'm not waiting for God to prosper me. He's already prospered me. I'm just expectant. I'm outstretched neck. I am waiting, expectant. I'm ready to receive whatever it is that he gives to me. That's a spiritual posture that we need to have when we're believing God for something. Amen? I want to have a, an expectancy, a total expectancy. God hope is full expectation and total expectancy. We have a promise for God, from God, and He will perform it. Amen? How many of you have a promise from God? He will perform it. Now, it's, what we do sometimes when we mess it up is we try and show God the best way for Him to do it. Now, God, here's, a really, here's several options of how you want to get this money to me. I'll just list them in alphabetical order. You know, the mailbox is always good. The Pentecostal handshake is great. The anonymous envelope. However you want to do it, God, here's how you should do it. See, I always expect God to do it, but he always does it so unexpectedly. Every time you think you got it pegged on how God's going to do something for you, he has this whole other thing that he comes through and that he does for us. Amen? But we have to have hope. Bible hope is based in the Bible and it's always future tense. Always future tense. Psalm 62, 5. My soul waits silently on God alone for my expectation is from him. That is your spirit telling your soul, shut up. Yeah. Just shut up. Quit worrying. Quit thinking. Quit conniving. Quit planning. My soul, my mind, will, and emotion wait silently on God alone. Why? Because my expectancy is from Him. I'm expecting God to move. And my soul, your soul might be going nuts. How's this going to happen? When's it going to happen? Why hasn't it happened? Shh. Don't say it. Don't let those words come out of your mouth. Put your full expectancy on God that he gave you a promise and he will keep his promise to you. Amen? My soul waits silently on God alone for my expectation is from him. Hope is like the, the, the mold of what you're believing for. Amen? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So let's say I'm believing God for a car. I'm going to have an inner image of what that car looks like. That's hope. Hope makes the mold. Now, I fill myself with faith, and when I speak faith, faith produces the raw material that fills up that mold of whatever it is that I'm believing for till I finally see it come to pass. So your hope is that inner image of whatever it is that you're believing for. Your faith is the raw product that goes into that hope that produces after I... But remember, faith is only released by speaking. You got to say it. You got to speak it. You got to say it. You got to speak it. You got to keep saying it and keep saying it and keep saying it. And the more you say it, the more you believe it, the more of that mold gets filled and the more of that image begins to take place, then all of a sudden that thing is, you got it, it's yours. Like I said before, you're going to have it in here first before you have it out there. That's when you filled up that inner image, that hope with the raw material faith. Now you're ready. Okay, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm here. I'm, I'm good. I'm ready for it, Lord. I'm filled up to the rim. I'm living now out of that overflow. I'm overflowing. That mold is overflowing with the faith that's in me. And now I'm ready to see whatever it is that I'm believing for. But that goes back to just being saturated with the word. Amen? It's, it, it's, it just takes sometimes a little bit more than I think that we're willing to do. And I'm just as guilty sometimes. Amen? It just really does. Romans 4.17 Bless you. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being those things that were not. One of the characteristics that we have just like God is that we are to call those things as though they are, even though we don't see them. Amen. So that's where that name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, and all that kind of came for. I'm just doing what my father said. 
Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that the tuition for my kids is paid for in full in Jesus' name. It's mine. I see it. I have it. It's real to me. I have an inward witness. Well, where's all the money? Doesn't matter. I'm calling those things not as though they are. I'm calling it as it's already paid. I'm not waiting for it to be paid. It is paid. Amen. I'm not waiting for these people to get saved. They are saved in Jesus' name. I'm treating them as if they are. I am praying for them as they are. I am praying that they just receive whatever it is that God has for them, what God has already done for them. Amen. The living word produces a living faith. The living word produces a living faith. The faith that I'm talking about tonight does not come any other way but by the word of God. There is no other way to get faith outside of the Bible. It is the number one source. Why do you get living faith out of the word? Because the word is alive. It is both quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, according to the book of Hebrews. Think about that. When you're reading the Bible, when you're spending time in the Word, that Word is alive. I encourage you, and this will help you. When you go into the Word of God, do it on purpose. Lord, show me something. I'm not just here just to read a few pages and do my due diligence, which, you know, I'm reading the book of Exodus. Not a page turner towards the end. I'm just going to be honest with you. Amen. It's not, you know, gripping. We're out of Egypt. You know, all the mighty miracles and all that. Now they're just a bunch of people in the desert that are angry at Moses for being in the, in the desert. You know what I mean? But when I go in there on purpose, even out of that, God begins to show me something. Amen. Because even that book is alive. Those pages are alive. The word is alive. And so my faith begins to grow. I start thinking, well, God, if you're that patient with that group of people, you're going to be patient with me. Amen. I mean, they did you wrong, God. I mean, everything. So funny how the calf just jumped out of the fire. Aaron took all the gold. Moses, I don't know what happened. I took the gold, I threw it in, and this calf, you know, just came jumping out. Amen? Everybody okay? Yeah. Hallelujah. Your faith is the most precious thing that you have. It is your most valuable possession. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Faith and love. Amen? Faith and love. I've spent years now teaching on faith. We need to be teaching on love also. Because so goes your love walk, so goes your faith walk. Faith worketh by love. Amen? So we have to, we have to be just as conscious about our faith walk and about our love walk. Amen? I'd love to agree with you. If you, what, what you're believing for, if you feel led and you want a, somebody to pray with you and agree with you, I'd love to agree with you. Um, I think it's important that when we do say that we're standing in faith for something, not just to use that word I'm believing is just Christian slang. You know, I'm believing. Well, are you really? You know, there's a big difference between saying I'm believing and then actually believing. Amen. If you're telling me that you're standing in faith, then you should have corresponding scriptures to what you're believing. And they should be written down and they should be a part of you and they should be something that's confessed. And there should be prayer time, and there should be some seed sowing time, and there should be some obedience time, there should be some forgiveness time. Amen? Unforgiveness will keep back the blessings and the things of God. Amen? we got to walk. We have to forgive. we got to keep our pipes, our spiritual arteries clean, you know, so the blood flows. We don't want to have a spiritual heart attack. Amen? All right. Well, we'll stop here. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for the word of God that's both quick and powerful. Yes. Lord, thank you for the, all the promises of God. And you even at home right now, if you've just heard something today, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, and you would like to learn more about this wonderful walk of faith, first let me just tell you how much that Jesus Christ loves you. God loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die on a cross and take all of our sins so that you wouldn't have to. And all the Bible says is that if you will believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. And you can start this whole wonderful new life. You become a new creature, a new creation. 
And if you made that commitment today, just email us here at the church and we'd love to send you some information and, and help you with this walk. So Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the word and uh, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.